Welcome back. This is Power Breakfast on Tuesday. We try and bring you some health tips uh, and answer some questions that you all have. Today we're going to be talking about the different types of contraceptives uh, that are available on the market family planning in general, I suppose. So if you have any questions or comment, go ahead, comments, I'll go ahead and SMS uh, 22422. I'll be checking to see some of your comments. I do have a, a doctor here to assist us <laughs> with uh, some of this content. Dr. Bridget Monda, uh, welcome. Thank you, Joey. Thanks for being here on Power Breakfast. I see you've brought a lot <laughs> and we've got a lot to get through. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and, and begin uh, and talk contraceptives 101. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, are unaware about the options available and there's a lot of myths surrounding you know side effects and all these types yeah. of things mm -hmm. so we'll get into a lot of that but maybe we can just start with what birth control actually is i know it's about women having options and you know being able to plan your family accordingly yeah. but what is birth control and what does it actually do okay um contraception or birth control is the artificial means of preventing um, pregnancy that will re result from sexual intercourse. I mean, that's basically it. Mm -hmm. And they're different methods, yeah. but mainly artificial. Yeah, okay. mainly artificial. Right, now we were just talking off camera and you're telling me that the different categories. So you categorize them into hormonal, non-hormonal, what are the other categories? It's mainly hormonal and non-hormonal. Okay. So when you talk of the non-hormonal methods, um, natural methods are some examples, like counting your days, the natural family planning, and then the barrier methods like the condom. We have the female condom and the male condom. Now, the other non-hormonal methods are actually the coils, but what most people know about is the hormonal methods. Yeah. So we'll talk about hormonal methods and non-hormonal methods. Okay, so let's start with uh, hormonal methods. Uh, I, I know there's some, some pills here on the table. Uh, maybe you can start explaining what, what each of the different hormonal methods are. Okay, but let me explain what hormonal methods, mm -hmm. uh, hormonal methods of contraception are. Um, the, the hormones that they're based actually on the fee, on the hormones that make us women, and it's mainly two: estrogen and progesterone. So we have uh, the combined methods, which have both estrogen and progesterone, and then we have the plain progesterone methods. Now. Um, the idea behind hormonal methods is actually to create a false pregnancy state in the body. Because when, you, when, you t when you're on a homo hormonal method, the hormone levels are raised above a certain level. So put in a simple way, the brain is tricked into thinking you're pregnant. And when you're pregnant, you will not release an egg. Uh -huh. And without an egg there, it doesn't matter how much sperm there is swimming ar around, you will not get pregnant. Okay. Um, and it has benefits. Um, that come apart from just the contraception. Now, um, we had an image of the uterus. Right, I yeah. believe we can put that on the screen, Director, if we can just put up the, the image on the screen there. All right, there we go. Yeah, so what, what contraception actually uh, tries to do is to prevent the egg and the sperm um, meeting. Mm -hmm. So what happens after sexual intercourse, when semen is deposited in the vagina, the sperm swim up and go and look for an egg. Mm -hmm. And they swim up uh, through the uterus, um, and the egg is usually released from the ovary and floats into the fallopian tube. Mm -hmm. The fallopian tube is where fertilization takes place. That egg is fertilized and then settles into the uterine cavity and forms a baby. Mm -hmm. So all, contraceptives method, or all contraceptive methods try to prevent all or some of those, uh, all or some of those things mm -hmm. um, from happening. Right. So when it comes to hormonal contraception, the first effect is actually at the level of uh, the cervix. Mm -hmm. There's a mucus plug there where they make it very, very thick so that sperm cannot penetrate and get to the egg then they make the lining of the uterus very, very thin so that even if an egg is fertilized, mm -hmm. it's not able to implant and, and uh, form a baby. Oh, I see. Then it makes the fallopian tubes lazy or uncoordinated in their movement because when that egg is released from the ovary, it actually just floats in the pelvis. So the fallopian tubes literally move to suck in. They create a current and suck in the egg. Mm -hmm. um, and then the main action of hormonal contraceptives is actually at the level of the ovary. When the hormone levels are raised above a certain level, the ovaries will not release an egg. They're literally put to sleep. Mm -hmm. So the eggs are there. The potential for you getting pregnant is still there. It's just that the eggs are no longer released. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so those things also come with benefits. Because the mucus plug is made very, very thick, it means it's not just sperm that cannot penetrate, but infection-causing bacteria, oh. um, which would ascend into the upper parts of the reproductive tract and cause infection and uh, cause problems like blockage of the tubes, which would cause infertility, mm -hmm. um, chronic pelvic um, uh, pain, um, pelvic abscesses as well. So 
hormonal contraceptives actually pr uh, protect your fertility. Wow. That is something that a lot of people don't understand. Well, yeah, because most people will say, you know, these, these uh, drugs are going to make you infertile. infertile. They actually don't. They protect mm -hmm. your fertility. Mm -hmm. Then because they um, thin the lining of the uterus, you find that when you're on methods, for example, like the pill or the patch, the amount of bleeding you get is reduced. So for us doctors, that's a positive because it, it, uh, with less blood, it means you're protected against anemia. And then uh, because of the effect they have on the lining of the uterus as well and on the uterus itself, you find that um, you stop getting uh, period pains. Yeah. And then they actually protect against cancer of the uterus. That's another wow. benefit okay. because they thin the lining of the uterus. And then because of their action on the ovary, you'll find that um, they prevent certain types of ovarian cancers mm -hmm. and certain types of ovarian cysts. And then uh, certain brands of the pill, like um, Yasmin, like um, Dronis, or even the regular microgynon Femiplan, are also very good for the skin and the hair. So you'll find that uh, women who have very severe acne, dermatologists or gynecologists will mm. put them on the oral contraceptive pill to regulate their cycles and prevent the acne developing. Wow. So those are some of the benefits. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. When we talk about uh, some of the side effects, of course, uh, the, the one that women usually talk about is weight gain. Yes. Some women experience weight loss. Uh, there's also fear of blood clots with some of these uh, contraceptives. Contraceptives, Can you talk yes. about that? Yeah. Um, now, remember, it's not one size fits all. Yeah. And that is why it is very important to not just walk into a pharmacy to get a contraceptive method. See your gynecologist or your, or your healthcare provider so that then they take a history. And then they're able to give you all the information you have about uh, all the information there is about contraceptives. And you're able to then make an informed choice with the information that you've been given. OK, so, for example, if you've had a history of clot formation or you've had a history of high blood pressure, we will not put you on hormonal methods of contraception. OK, so we have the options of non-hormonal contraception, which are mainly the barrier methods like the condoms or the female condom, uh, like, like the male condom and uh, the female condom or the, the, um, the, the thingy, the coils themselves. And we have different types on the market as well. OK, yeah. so non-hormonal, what's the, what's the big difference here? You're dealing with with, with non hormonal someone. actually simply don't have hormones. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, just the main as ones, effective? Um, some of them, yes. Okay, just as effective as a hormonal contra contraceptives, mainly the coils. Huh? Now, what the coils do, we insert them into the uterine cavity, mm -hmm. the cavity of the uterus. And what they do, they create a very hostile environment in the uterine cavity so that then when there is sperm, they're not able to get beyond the uterine cavity and get to the egg and fertilize it. Mm -hmm. Or even if an egg is fertilized, it's not able to implant into the uterine cavity. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, you starting a journey through the Sahara Desert. You definitely will not get to your destination. Mm -hmm. A simple way of putting it, that, or a simple way of putting it. Yeah, and I know mm. you brought some of the, the coils with you. Yeah. Some of the more traditional ones. I know that you mentioned that one of these is newer in the market. Yeah. Perhaps you can just take us through that. Okay. Um, the oldest one um, is actually copper tea. This is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's how it's inserted and that's how it sits in the uterine cavity. Mm -hmm. It has copper which is released and it creates an inflammatory uh, environment, a very inflamed environment in the uterine cavity. Mm -hmm. And that's what prevents um, um, the sperm. Uh, well, pregnancy, the yeah. sperm getting to the egg and uh, fertilizing it and uh, um, you get pregnant. Right. Then we have what we call the multi-load. Now, this gives you contraception for up to 10 years, sometimes, let's say, 13 years. Wow. Okay? But in between, if you want to have a baby, all we do is remove it. Okay. And uh, because it doesn't affect your cycle in any way, your return to fertility, as we call it, is almost immediate and you're able to conceive. Is it a surgical procedure? It's a very involved procedure to uh, have no, it? No, it's a... Five ten minute thing that is okay. done in the in the in a doctor's office. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like having a pap smear done. Okay. Yeah, it's a two minute thing. So really. not too involved. Yeah, okay. No, and then we have uh, the newer types like multi load. Um, if your cameraman can actually zero in, mm -hmm. you'll see that it has um, the shape is a bit different from this. Mm -hmm. So it's thought to sit better in the uterine cavity, and then um, actually I can open it. Okay. And this, uh, you were telling me, is a five-year This is a five-year method. Okay. Yeah, this is a five-year method. Okay. This is a five-year method. So um, this is just the tube for inserting it. This doesn't sit in the uterus. Right. Actually, the coil itself is just this small structure, this. Ah, okay. Okay, so it sits in the uterus like that. Okay. Okay. And then we cut the strings. Okay. So this is thought to be better because it, it's not easily expelled like um, the copper tea mm -hmm. um, sometimes does happen, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, dis expelled or dislodged because of the, sp the, because of the spicules. Ah. And this gives you contraception for five years. Right. Has the same effect as the copper tea. 
um, copper is released into the uterine cavity and creates a hostile environment. Okay. Okay. Then we have what I call is a duo. Well, what I call a duo method. It's called Mirena. Mm -hmm. Um, this, uh, this is actually, it gives you the benefits of the coil and the benefits of hormonal contraception because it's actually a hormone releasing coil. Okay. Um, this is red. It's actually white. It's red because it's a dummy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, the green bit would be, you'd find it's a cylinder of hormone. Okay. And it's white in color. Mm -hmm. We insert it exactly the same way. This is just the gadget for inserting it and mm -hmm. we cut the string. So it and gradually releases yes. the copper? No. This is hormonal. Oh, this is hormonal. Okay. So it releases the hormones okay. into, into, actually into the, just the area where it's needed. So that's the benefit. You get very little of the hormone in the, in the bloodstream. Okay. So it does everything the coils do. It does everything hormonal contraceptives do with minimal side effects. Side effects. Okay, so you find gotcha. it's not very, it's very rare for a woman to put on uh, weight. You get, the, you get all the benefits of hormonal contraception, mm -hmm. um, less bleeding, less period pains. It protects against cancer of the uterus. Mm -hmm. um, it suppresses ovulation to a point because the hormone levels are not as high as the regular hormonal contraceptives. Okay. Then we have something very new on the market right now. It's called the intrauterine ball. Um, this is what it looks like. It's actually an improvement on the copper T, on the copper T and the thingy and the multi load. Mm -hmm. So it's made of a f of a material that when it's inserted into the uterus, it actually forms a ball. Ah, yes, I see. It forms a ball. And those balls are actually copper. Ah. Now, it's thought, it's, a, it's an improvement actually on these coils because what it does, it's thought to sit more comfortably in the uterus. Mm -hmm. So you don't get the cramps that you may occasionally get when you have a coil in. Mm -hmm. There's less bleeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's also for five, um, it's also for five years. This is actually very, very new. Brand new in the market. Yeah. It's, I think, I don't think it's more than six months. Wow. Yeah. So we've just started putting it in. So of course, uh, a concern that our viewers might have is the expense of these. I mean, you're investing in a, you know, five year uh, oh. contraceptive plan or a 10 year. What, what are the costings of some of, some of these? Um, the costings vary actually, mm -hmm. uh, Joey. It depends on where you're, where, where you're getting it put mm -hmm. in. Um, because if it's in the public um, hospitals, it's, you probably are just paying for the card. Right. Yeah. If it's in a private doctor's clinic, the, the prices could vary. Anything from 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, mm -hmm. um, 4,000, 5,000, maybe for the copper tea. Um, anything from seven to, I'm just guessing. Let me, let me be honest. Okay. Let me be honest. Uh, because these prices vary yeah, depending based on who you're, on going, where to you're see. going. The Mirena is the one that is a bit pricey because of the cost. Mm -hmm. um, it's an average of 15,000, 20,000, yeah. 25,000, depending on who's putting it now, in for you. Let's say you've done this for the five year. Are there periods in between where you have to see a doctor to get it readjusted? Or what if you're no, having. No, you don't. Re you don't what we usually do, when you do come in, for example, we'll tell you. Um, it's a way of also getting patients to come in for a pap smear. Come in for a, your pap smear and let the doctor check. Yeah. And if you're not sure of the position, all you need to do is to do an ultrasound and then it'll mm -hmm. tell us whether it's still in the position. Mm -hmm. Many times what happens with the Mirena, you stop getting your period because it thins the lining of the uterus to a point where there's nothing to lose. Wow. So, you know, a, a, a patient will panic. So all you need to do is send them for an ultrasound and confirm yeah. that the Mirena is actually in place. You did mention something earlier that I wanted to touch on, which is... Uh, at the point that you decide I'm ready to have children and you want to wean yourself off of the contraceptives, how soon until you can conceive with, with the different methods? Um, with, uh, with the coils, it's almost immediate because right. the effect is very minimal when it comes to the cycle. Mm -hmm. With hormonal contraceptives, it depends on you. Okay, the one that may give you delayed return to fertility mm -hmm. are um, the, the three monthly injection, but I'll explain. Okay. Um, what I could do, let me just go through these so that you understand. All right, go ahead. So these are the combined methods, mainly the pills, mm -hmm. okay? What everybody actually knows about. Yeah. And pl please note, I'm not talking about the e-pill. The yeah. e-pill is not a regular method of contraception. It's an emergency method that you will use when you have intercourse at a time when it's not safe, if you've been sexually assaulted, mm -hmm. but knowing that you're going to go on to a regular method of contraception. We actually tell patients that really, if you're having intercourse more than four times in a year, you have no business using the e-pill because the risks of you getting pregnant are high. Mm -hmm. If you've already op uh, ovulated, it will not prevent pregnancy. It increases your risks of ectopic pregnancies. And then there's this myth that um, it's not really a, a hormonal method. It is a hormonal method. Mm -hmm. So you'll find patients coming and telling you that they don't want a hormonal method, but they use the e-pill, forgetting mm -hmm. that that actually is a hormonal method. Yeah. So these the, the pills are actually based on... 
they, they, they combine the, they contain the artificial forms of the hormones I'd, I'd mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. estrogen and progesterone, and they try to mimic the cycle as closely as possible. Mm -hmm. So when you're starting on the pill, um, we try and ask you to, the first, first cycle is usually, you'll start it probably the first pack, you'll probably start it on like the first, first, second or third day mm -hmm. of your cycle. So that it close, stays as close as possible mm -hmm. to your regular period. Mm -hmm. So you take a tablet every day, and then you take a, a break around of, the same of seven time. days, <laughs> around the day. same time. Mm -hmm. We usually tell patients to take it in the evening after supper so that mm -hmm. if you have side effects like nausea, you will sleep through it. Yeah. yeah. So you take a pill every day and then take a break of seven days. In that seven day period, um, that's when you'll get your period. It's mm -hmm. actually a withdrawal, uh, it's a withdrawal bleed, what we call a withdrawal bleed, because the hormone levels drop, mm -hmm. you get your period, and then you start another cycle. Right. Now, there are improvements on that. Mm -hmm. You'll find that there are, some manufacturers actually give you 28 tablets instead of 21. Okay. So it's 21 active tablets, which and contain then... both the estrogen and progesterone, mm -hmm. and then seven brown tablets so that you don't have to count days. Ah, okay. Okay. Now, um, there is an improvement on the pill now, something called Dronis. Okay. Okay. Uh, this has a much, le uh, a much lower level of estrogen. Okay. This has 30 micrograms of estrogen. Mm -hmm. This has 20 micrograms of estrogen. Okay. So what Reducing does that mean? your risks of uh, complications like um, clot formation. Okay. Ah, okay. Then you take 24 tablets with a break of four days instead of 21 tablets with a break of seven days. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because of the lower levels of estrogen. Ah. So it is also easier for you to take because you're just taking a tablet every day. Okay. The side effect profile of this is also very good. You get less fluid retention that you may get with these others. Mm -hmm. um, little, if any, weight gain at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then it regulates your cycle. Okay. And then the type of progesterone it has in it is also very good for women who have acne or uh, polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome. Okay. okay, that's something. And you said the name different. of that is Dronis. Dronis. Yeah, okay. it's called Dronis. Okay. Then we have the contraceptive patch, which is really good because um, this is actually the pill delivered through the skin. Mm -hmm. You have four patches. You have four patches, and what these do, they mimic. They actually mimic the pill. Mm -hmm. Okay, you apply it either on the back, on the shoulder, on the front of the abdomen, or at the back mm -hmm. on the buttock. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first patch you put on your skin, okay? That covers you for one week. Mm -hmm. The next week you'll remove that patch and put the second patch. Okay. That's equal to the second row. Okay. The third week you'll remove that and put the third patch. And in the meantime, you can just go about your, your yes, daily... Yes, you can swim in it, sound in it, jog right. in it, um, shower in it. It doesn't mm -hmm. come off if it's properly um, applied. Uh, yeah. Okay, if it's properly applied. It does exactly the same thing the pill does. So it's mm -hmm. actually the pill delivered through the skin. Yeah. And then, very good because it's on your body, on your mind, you forget about yeah. it. You only need to Because there are people you know, who complain about the yes. pill that I just keep forgetting yeah. to take it. Yeah. You know, so what day. we do, when you start your first box, that's the only one that's related to your cycle. Mm -hmm. So for example, today is a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. If you start it today, your patch day remains Tuesday. So all you need to remember is you need to do something about your patch on Tuesday. Ah, okay. So if you start this Tuesday, you put the first patch, it stays mm -hmm. on your body for a week. Mm -hmm. Next week, you remove this. Next Tuesday, you put the second patch, it stays on your body for a week. Mm -hmm. The third Tuesday, you remove this, put the third patch. Fourth week, you remove that, be patch free for one week, mm -hmm. and then start a new box. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it makes it very, very easy. Yeah. Okay. It makes it very, very easy. So those are the combined methods we have. Mm -hmm. um, there's an injectable form of the pill, which some we've had on the market for mm -hmm. a while, um, uh, called norigynon. I didn't have a sample of that. Then we have the plain progesterone methods, okay. which are now the injectables. Mm -hmm. And these um, you get every couple months? Yes. This, uh, this is called Noristerat. You get it once every two months. Okay. Okay. And then um, the famous Depo Provera, the one you get once every three months. Mm -hmm. This is the regular Depo Provera, mm -hmm. but there's an improved form called Cyanopress. Okay. It has much less progesterone in it mm -hmm. than this. This has 150 milligrams. Uh -huh. This has 104. So, so the side effect profile side effects, of this, yeah. yes. It's much better. Right. So the risks of weight gain, irregular cycles, um, no, no, get, not getting your period at all. Although mm -hmm. for us doctors, that's an advantage because it protects you against anemia. Yeah, and then right. in, this is injected in the buttock. This is actually injected into the anterior, the, the, the front of the abdomen, and mm -hmm. it has a very small injection. So okay. those are some of the benefits. Right. Yeah. And we have the Then we have the implants. Well. Um, what people always call norigynon, when in actual fact, well, it's a different name. Um, this gives you contraception for up to five years. We, we, we insert them under the arm, mm -hmm. just below the skin. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's the one that uh, has two sticks. This gives you contraception for five years. Mm -hmm. And then there's one, this is this is called Jadel. This is the, the improved form of the norigainon. Okay. Then uh, Implanon, this is just a gun that is used to insert it. So there's one of these sticks here. Okay. And this gives you contraception for three years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, does exactly what these plain progesterone, because these are plain progesterone as well, okay. does exactly what these ones do, mm -hmm. give you the same benefits as well. Right, and finally the, the commonest, uh, sorry, the commonest reason for women to remove these is mm -hmm. usually weight gain or irregular bleeding. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Then we have the condoms, the barrier methods I had mentioned. Mm -hmm. The only reason I carried this is that we have the regular, we have the regular condoms, mm -hmm. latex, and then there's some uh, people who are allergic, allergic to latex, yeah. so there are some latex-free condoms. I know Durex have a brand, and yeah. then there's another one called Skin. In terms of effectiveness, specifically with condoms, because you know I've heard different percentages. There are people who will say 98%, some people will say 85%. You know, depending on how it is that how you use used, them. Yeah. What, what what do you have to say about uh, effectiveness of? Okay, number one, uh, we advise patients it's better to use a condom than to use the e-pill. That's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, remember all these methods don't protect you against uh, STIs, STIs like uh, yeah. HIV, hepatitis B. So that's another advantage you have for the, for the condom. But then properly used, and especially if you're counting your days, this is actually highly effective. The mm -hmm. condom is actually highly effective. Yeah. When we talk of percentages, Joey, um, that's mainly scientific. Mm -hmm. let, let, let me be honest, because really, who knows whether you'll fall in the 15% who will get pregnant if they use a condom or in the 85% who will not get pregnant when they use condoms. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it is an effective method, properly used. Right. Yeah. Uh, in terms of finding out the right one for you, would you uh, would it be fair to say that sometimes it can take you a couple of different methods for you to figure out what works well with your body or how does one decide this works for me, this doesn't? That's why you need to see your doctor, mm -hmm. you need to see your healthcare provider to have all this information and make an informed choice with the advice of your healthcare provider, mm -hmm. okay, your gynecologist or uh, your family planning nurse, because we are then able to tell. So many times, if you're starting a method for the first time, we'll suggest you try a shorter acting method. Mm -hmm. If that works for you, then you can move to a, a longer acting method. I see. If you have issues like um, a history of migraines, mm -hmm. uh, issue, uh, an issue of uh, varicose veins, we can't put you on hormonal methods, so we go to the non-hormonal methods. Right. If you've never had children, um, we would suggest that you put in the Mirena because remember, it gives you the benefits of hormonal contraception by protecting your fertility. Ah, yeah. I see. So the, it, you, all that information you'll be able to get Once when you, you go to doctor. see your doctor, yes. I have a couple of questions uh, that have come in, several questions that have come in, in on the SMS here. Somebody is uh, asking, um, if I use it when I'm 20, can it affect me later on uh, in life? I guess that's also another question I wanted to ask is, what age, is there an, a proper age to actually start? Using there really is, Joey. There really isn't a proper age because, really, if you're sexually active and right. you don't want to get pregnant, mm -hmm. you have to use a, re a regular method of contraception. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's this myth that uh, okay, you find a patient walking in and telling you, "I don't want to use uh, contraceptives because I'm not married," mm. um, and you'll ask a patient, "Okay, so what's the difference between you without the ring and the certificate and you after?" The only difference is that you've legalized a relationship. But you're so still your needs remain, active, yeah, yeah, your needs remain the same. Yeah. So the thing is, what would be the best method for you? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the long term, when do you want to have your children? So those are the factors that you, you, you know, help you help a patient and help you as a doctor also help, help the patient make um, a, a decision. Makes so if sense. an 18 year old is sexually active, why shouldn't she be on, an, on, on, on a contraceptive method? Mm -hmm. This is a lot safer than having an unwanted pregnancy. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. If a 30 year old decides that she wants a method, why not? Yeah. So it really depends. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I have someone who uh, texted and said they used the pill for three years and afterwards stopped. They were unable to conceive because they developed cysts. What uh, causes these cysts? Uh, that patient most, okay. Um, this is just a guess. Okay. That patient, most likely has polycystic ovarian syndrome, okay, where you have cysts in the in the ovary, and that is something that was there before. It has nothing to do with contraception. Again, yeah, with the so it's important it's again important, to get exactly. evaluated and know exactly. that you know the pre-existing exactly. conditions, the pre-existing conditions. Yeah. And by the way, the the combined oral oral contraceptive pill is actually a method of treating PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. But I don't know. Um, 
And then another thing is, you know, there's this, um, you're told you have cysts. Mm -hmm. Is it a normal cyst? Because all our eggs develop in cysts, or is it an abnormal cyst? Mm -hmm. So the only way you can actually know that is uh, if you go to see a doctor. So for me, most likely she just does not have the right information. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's someone else here, Eliza, is saying I was using an implant for five, of five years, but after two years, uh, now I'm having pain in the lower belly. Is that normal? Does she still have the implant? I, I'm assuming so, based on her, based on her uh, SMS. Because she's remember, had it for two years. hormonal contraceptives actually prevent pain-causing problems mm -hmm. like um, um, uh, period pains. Mm -hmm. She needs to go and see her doctor because you know you really can't diagnose that yeah. just over an SMS. Yeah. Yeah. How about in terms of when you're first starting uh, either of these methods, other than the the, the condoms and such? Uh, people always ask, well, how how long does it take for it to start? being effective so that I know that I'm protected. Um, with a coil, by the way, it's immediate. Huh? Okay. Yeah, but we usually tell patients 24 to 48 hours okay. just to be on the safe side because many times you may not actually put it in. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the coils. The easiest way to actually insert a coil, the easiest time for you to insert a coil is on your heaviest day of your period mm -hmm. because that's when the cervix is open mm -hmm. because it actually closes up. Um, although there are method, there, 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 there is a medicine that we can give you to insert, uh, to insert in the vagina before you, before to open up the cervix to be able to put it in. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's the pill, if it's, uh, for example, if you're starting the pill at the ideal time, which is about the second or third day of your cycle, mm -hmm. you're actually within 24 to 48 hours. So we, on a general thing, on a general basis, we usually tell patients. Um, 24 to 48 hours, although many of them are, are actually effective immediately. Right. Mm. So that's important to know, but if you start them at the, at the correct time yes. of your, of yes. your cycle, yes. right? Mm. Uh, in terms of, resume, of resuming the normal cycle and you wanting to have children, we talked about that, uh, you know, on the coils, it's pretty much immediately that you can start having children. With the pills, is it a weaning process? Like, do you wean yourself off of it or do you just like stop and now I want to have children. How does okay. that work? It's really not a weaning uh, process, uh, Joey, because immediately you stop taking any medication, regardless of whether it's the pill or not. Mm -hmm. What happens? You'll take it in. It, um, it's absorbed. It does its job. It's metabolized by the liver. It's excreted in the kidney. So if you're not taking it every day, of course, the hormone levels drop. Mm -hmm. So many times you'll find a woman will stop the hormonal method, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, she'll get pregnant before she even gets her period because she'll ovulate. If she doesn't get pregnant is when her period will come. Mm -hmm. If she ovulates and she conceives, then she won't get her period. So it really depends. Yeah. And it's not one size fits all. Just mm -hmm. the way there's no method, it's not one size fits all for everybody. Um, you may take, you may get pregnant immediately after one period. It may take you three months, six months. It really depends. Yeah. What is known to cause a delayed return to fertility is the old depot. Mm -hmm. Okay, the old type of depot. Okay. But even then... Um, you usually should be able to get pregnant eventually. Now, recently in the news, we saw the story of fake uh, emergency contraceptive pills making them making their way uh, into the market, and people are asking, "Well, how do I know what's the real one, what's not? Is there a way to tell if, if you know, some of these are mm. not original?" The advice I'd give uh, the advice I'd give you is um, just make sure you buy your any drug, regardless of what it is, in a pharmacy that has a high turnover, in a pharmacy that has a good reputation, or in a pharmacy in a hospital. Then mm. you're sure of what you're getting. Yeah. Um, anything that is sold a little too cheap should always raise Question a red flag. Yes. Yeah. It should always raise a red flag. Okay. Because yeah. these things are sensitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, the turnover also. And then also check the expiry date. Mm. Yeah. Check the expiry date. Yeah, a lot of because, people don't yeah, do that. <laughs> a lot of people don't do that. They just buy it and yeah. take it home and then they get pregnant and they realize, wow, what happened? Yeah. yeah. But then also, please remember, Joey, that um, these are man-made things. Mm -hmm. There's always that small percentage, percentage yeah. of some people that it fails in. But it is not common. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about 99.9%, .9%, there's just that 0.01% mm -hmm. that may conceive on the pill. But when you ask, many times you'll find um, mm. either the pill was not being taken correctly with skipped days in between mm -hmm. or they bought an expired product. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just finally here because we're just out of time, someone was asking about uh, what your thoughts are on the men, men uh, <laughs> male contraceptive pill uh, that uh, also has been in conversation recently. It really would be good. Uh, it's just getting men to comply. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kenyan men <laughs> is one thing. <laughs> Um, and you see, who, who, who 
carries the burden of the pregnancy? It's the woman. It's the woman so that yeah. is why it has always been um, a method as, that, that's developed for the women first. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is one. And then something else I want to say, Joey, before mm -hmm. we close, mm -hmm. is that people need to understand, the public needs to understand that hormonal contraceptives or contraceptive methods but in particular the hormonal ones, are some of the most researched drugs. We've had these things since the early 60s, wow. which is before so many of us were born, mm -hmm. okay? So, and there's constant improvement. There's constant research going on. Um, so there are risks, it's true, but the benefits of contraception far outweigh those mm -hmm. of having an unwanted pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Monta. You've been very educational this yeah. morning. I'm sure a lot of people have been taking notes at home. So hopefully uh, you've uh, educated uh, some people in the right way to go, which of course is first to see your doctor, yes. find out what works for you. And also to remember that these do not prevent uh, STIs, STIs. As, yes. as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Okay. And thank you at home for watching and staying tuned uh, to our health tips here on Power Breakfast. Myself and Fred Indimuli will be back tomorrow morning. But next up is Wahiga on Citizen Extra. Do stay tuned.